Hi, my name is Dr. Julian Avoa. I'm a practicing OBGYN and cosmetic surgeon out of El Paso, Texas. Today I wanted to take a few minutes to talk about uh, the increasing number of uh, deliveries done by midwives. Uh, I read online a couple days ago and saw a, uh, on television today a report related to a, um, a report that was uh, published from the uh, Centers for Disease Inc Control or CDC related to the number of uh, deliveries done by midwives over the past 10 years. And what we see is there, there has been a increase in the number of deliveries done by midwives, uh, up to a little bit over 8%. And if you remove uh, the number of cesarean sections, because midwives can't do C-sections, and compare them to OBs, then we're looking at about a 12% uh, number, uh, uh, number of deliveries done by midwives. And in New Mexico, which is our sister state, about 24% of deliveries at particular hospitals are being done by the midwives. Uh, as an OBGYN, most people would think that I would have a biased opinion uh, in favor of the OB to deliver uh, babies. Uh, but in reality, I think that there's, uh, I really, really applaud the number of deliveries done by midwives. I think that they are fantastic well-educated, highly skilled uh, um, uh, medical personnel that have not only a, um, a place, but a significant position in the uh, medical community related to, uh, to uh, maternity and for also related to, obviously, uh, vaginal delivery, since uh, midwives cannot do cesarean sections. Uh, way back in the, 19, in the 1800s, there was a a clash between the midwives and the, um, the medical doctors. And in the United States, uh, it became um, the OB's one. And so OB's started doing uh, deliveries, uh, specifically started, I think, out of Massachusetts, where it was um, outlawed for anyone other than a doctor to deliver a baby. Uh, and here in Texas, uh, you are allowed, midwives are allowed to deliver babies as throughout the United States, and there is a high support for them, especially out of the University Hospital or Thomason Hospital. Uh, with that said, in, in England, however, the majority of uh, deliveries, from my understanding, are being done by midwives. So they have proven themselves time and time again that they are excellent technicians and uh, provide an excellent one-on-one -on -one care with their patients. As a matter of fact, uh, the midwives, in many art circumstances, provide more care with their patients than do the OBGYNs because many OBGYNs, because of the size of their practices, are not able to uh, uh, provide the, the number of hours and the number of time with uh, their patients as, as compared to the midwives. Uh, the only times that we see a significant amount of time provided is when someone is attempting a, a, a VBAC or a vaginal birth after cesarean section, which can take 12, 18 hours, and the doctor is there uh, with the patient that entire time. Um, so I wanted to say and congratulate the midwives because I think that they are doing a wonderful job, and I'm glad to see, and I think it's important to see, that there is some competition going on between the midwives and the OBs because it is going to... It, it is a light at the end of the tunnel to show OBs, uh, board certified OBs, uh, that, um, hey, listen, there is an alternative uh, for patients, and this alternative is the midwives, and they're providing excellent care. So you need to really, really uh, increase your, uh, the amount of time you spend with your patients and decrease your rate of cesarean section, which we have seen is uh, extremely high, in my opinion, at almost 32.8%, and this needs to change. This absolutely needs to change. With that said, um, I'd also like to say one particular point related to the VBAC. I know that there are midwives that do vaginal birth, assist in vaginal birth after cesarean section, and I think that that's great. However, I, that it's very, very important for a midwife to have the backup of an OBGYN doctor because only the OBGYN can do a cesarean section in an emergency. A midwife cannot. Uh, I also am very concerned and cannot give my support for uh, midwives doing deliveries at uh, uh, birthing centers or at home because of the potential risk and complications related to the uterine rupture. Despite the fact that I'm a specialist in the uh, VBAC or the vaginal birth after cesarean section, despite the fact that I've done, um, uh, liter I literally do dozens a year and, uh, uh, and, and great support of the position of, of uh, the VBAC, the problem is that if you have a uterine rupture either 
at a birthing center or at home, by the time you're able to get that patient to the hospital, you could have a serious complication with either the baby or with the mother. And uh, I think that the best place, and really, despite being very liberal in my thinking, the only place that a VBAC should be attempted is at a hospital setting to have an emergency backup plan in case of a, in case an emergency does occur. Uh, besides that, I really, really believe and am very, very happy uh, that the midwives are doing so well, and I give 100% support behind them. And it's always great to, to to have options or to give options to our patients. And I may be uh, the most uh, liberal in that thinking as compared to a lot of my uh, OBGYN colleagues, but I want them to know that hey, listen, there is an alternative, and those that alternative is the midwives, and they're doing a really really good job, and we need to do a really, really good job or a better job than what we're doing right now in order to give our patients and our community uh, those options of great medical care here in the United States. Uh, if you have any questions and you'd like to uh, uh, blog, go to our blog. It's www.askdrnovoa.com or you can go to our website at www.drnovoa.com. Have a nice day.